What is going on you guys? AK40 Kevin here in the Gamer Heaven. Today we have yet another Razer wireless mouse to review. I am going through the entire lineup of Razer wireless mice right now. I have already reviewed and compared all of the keyboard lineup from Razer. Now it's the mice's turn. So the Death Adder was one of the OGs or original products from Razer. And this one can get a little bit confusing because there's four different versions that fluctuate substantially in the price range from $30 to $120. There's the original Death Adder, then the Death Adder Essential, which stripped off a lot of features like RGB and adjustability. Then you had the, R the uh, Death Adder V2, and then the Death Adder V2 Pro, which is the top of the line or flagship model. So today we're gonna break into this box, go over the initial setup with the Razer Synapse 3 application, do a little bit of gaming with this thing, and find out if this is a good mouse for your needs. So without further ado, guys, let's go. Hey guys, over here at the Stormtrooper desktop. If you're new to the channel, this is where we do our unboxings as well as our custom controller builds, PC builds, and a whole bunch of other fun stuff. So some of the features of the Death Adder Pro that makes it different than the Death Adder V2 is for one, their hyperspeed wireless connectivity, which comes with a USB dongle, which is gonna give you zero input latency or lag uh, in comparison to something like Bluetooth, which I say all the time is a terrible means for wireless uh, data transfer and whatnot. So if you're gaming, Bluetooth not the way to go. You definitely want a dongle that has a 2.4 gigahertz connection. So this has optical mouse switches in there, which much like the Razer Viper Ultimate that I have reviewed. And then you have Razer Focus Plus. Again, just fancy branding words there, boys. But a 20,000 DPI optical sensor. So a high DPA, DPA, a high DPI or CPI rate is kind of just for bragging rights because generally when you're playing a first person shooter, you're gonna have your DPI or CPI, which is your sensitivity, down to about 800 to 2000. Um, so you're never gonna get up there to 20K. That's basically when you sneeze and twitch just a little bit and your guide has like a 900 rotation on screen. So you would never use that. But it's cool to have that, I guess. This sports a 70, this sports 70 hours of rechargeable battery life, which is awesome. That is exactly what is on the Viper Ultimate, which is a fantastic Razer mouse, by the way. And then this comes in at 88 grams. We are gonna test that on the scale to make sure they're not cheesing those numbers. But 88 grams is pretty light. The Viper Ultimate comes in at 78. But again, this is a different shape and this is a little bit more of a uh, ergonomic sculpted design as compared to the Viper Ultimate being a ambidextrous mid-sized mouse. So breaking into this bad boy here, you have your traditional razor lime green branding all over it. And wow, this box actually opens up way different than any other razor product I've ever had before. So inside here, it says by gamers for gamers about a hundred thousand times inside the box there. Pretty interesting design there. This thing is interesting. It opens up like one of those, you remember those little things you'd make in like middle school where you'd be like, does this chick want to go to prom with me? Does my breath smell like sour onions? And then you'd ask it and it'd be like, yes, brush your teeth. So anyway, um, wow. For being an expensive mouse, this packaging looks incredibly cheap. Generally, Razer Premium packaging in their products that are $80 and up is laser cut foam and very, very fancy. So this is uh, just a plain old cardboard box, nothing special there. They do give you a little nylon bag here with some draw straps, but again, this actually feels really cheap and cheap as well. So, interesting. All right, you have your actual mouse. We're gonna set that aside for now. You have your little instruction manual here, which is gonna come with a thank you letter from the CEO, thanking you for your purchase, explaining if you have any issues to contact our customer service. You have your instruction manual here, which has that lime green razor marketing or branding in there. Um, English is the primary language, good font. I don't know how to read, but if you do, this is very instructional and informative. Honestly, I've set up so many razor products though, I know exactly what to do now. Uh, in the side here, you have absolutely nothing. And in the top, you have your little dongle here, which really doesn't do a whole heck of a lot. It's not like the Viper Ultimate dock over here, which has RGB and also allows you to dock in your mouse for charging. This doesn't serve too big of a purpose. It does have a non-slip bottom so you can set it on your desk. And if you want to plug in the 2.4 gigahertz wireless adapter into here, instead of taking up an extra port on your tower, you can do that. 
And then you have a really nice, uh, this isn't even braided, this is actually a step up from that, a microfiber 10 foot cable here. No, that's not 10 foot. Unless I have a 10 foot wingspan, which I don't. So this is probably about a, I don't know, six footer. And you have a razor branded USB connection right here with a little dust cover on it. And you have a proprietary plug in here. This is specific for this mouse. It has some sculpted cutouts to plug into the mouse. So if you do lose this cable, um, it's you're not gonna be able to use just any micro USB you have laying around to charge this thing. It is a really narrow port, so you'd have to find a very narrow USB plug. So please do not lose this or you're gonna be kinda SOL. All right, so taking a closer look at the Death Adder V2 Wireless or uh, Premium Ultimate, it is coming in at 89 grams, nope, 88, okay. 89, 88, 89, so 89 grams, so pretty darn light. This is an extremely sculpted mouse, as you can see, so this will work very well for palm grip. It is very, very comfortable for palm grip. This is like perfectly sculpted. Can you guys actually see what the shit I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, you can. This is actually extremely sculpted, so this is very comfortable for palm grip, which a lot of players use. Um, I was palm grip for the longest time. I've been kind of making the transition over to claw and fingertip now to get a little bit quicker in my first person shooters. But um, honestly, wow, holy crap. So very, very sculpted design, very ergonomic. I do like this rubber grip on the side here. Um, Razer technically uses two different styles of rubberized grips. This is the more modern one that they use on their current lineup. And as you see, everything is just really well sculpted. This is not a ambidextrous mouth. It is an ergo for right-handed players, uh, which granted, I'm left-handed. Most left-handed players, we do still play with our right hand, unless you're a real weirdo. Just kidding, not judging anyone. So um, mouse wheel is very, very nice. It has very distinct crisp steps, so that's good because you'll probably be swapping weapons and shooters with this. Also, clicking down the scroll wheel has a nice resistance to it, a nice satisfying tactile click. You have two DPI switching buttons on the top where you can switch your DPI or sensitivity on the fly. So maybe you pick up a sniper rifle, knock it down a couple um, settings there and be able to get some real fine precision movements there. You have two very large mechanical switches on the side here. I like these because they are very, very easy to cleanly hit with the ball of your thumb and the tip, the ball and the tip. So that works out really well for throwing grenades and equipment. I think that's really nice. And then these optical switches on here are fantastic. These are virtually the same ones on the Viper and they use a light beam that once it's broken, it basically actuates your input immediately. So they're quicker than mechanical switches and they're way, way quieter. So if you're streaming or chatting with partners in Discord, they're not gonna hear a lot of clicking. Uh, they're pretty quiet. They have a nice satisfying click instantaneous rebound, good resistance. I, I love these switches, I really do. Can't say enough positive things about that. The Razer logo will illuminate with RGB, not only to coordinate with your other Razer devices, but also when the battery status decreases, it'll go yellow and then red, letting you know it's time to charge this bad boy. And this does have the new aftermarket style, really good Razer skates. Razer has always had good stock skates on their mice, but with their recent iteration of mice, like the Viper Ultimate, for example, um, these white ones here are, these are virtually aftermarket skates on a stock mouse. So the fact that you can just run these and be competitive, you could actually play a tournament with these skates and you'd be fine. They're around the DPI sensor and then also around the uh, top and bottom here. And Honestly, I gotta say, Razer skates are right up there with aftermarket like G skates and companies like that. So that's really great. You can change your onboard profiles. Yes, this does have memory for onboard profiles. So if you go to a friend's house that doesn't have the Synapse app, you can just plug in your dongle and you have all your onboard profiles on there. You also have connectivity for both Bluetooth and 2.4 gigahertz wireless, which again, I would not recommend using Bluetooth for gaming. I would use this included 2.4 gigahertz dongle. Um, you're gonna get much, much better input response. And then you also have these two prongs here. Uh, there is a version of this that's an extra uh, 30 bucks, I believe, that comes with this wireless dock here. This is for the Viper Ultimate. Let's see if this actually docks on it. Okay, it does. So as you see, it's illuminated, it's charging. Um, so if you do have the Viper Ultimate or another mouse from Razer that has that dock, you can, they're all interchangeable. They just 
dock with those prongs there. It's mag magnetized, snaps in there, charges, creates a nice RGB effect and whatnot. So let's go ahead and plug in the sensor. Let's go ahead and plug in the wireless adapter there. And as soon as you plug in a new Razer product, the, Syn the Synapse 3 application is going to immediately recognize that you have a new Razer device and it's going to prompt you to install the drivers for new said device. Pretty guys over here at my PC as we can see and I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen with you guys and we're gonna go over the Razer Synapse 3 application. Now, if you've seen a lot of my other videos reviewing Razer products, you're probably very familiarized or accustomed to this application here. It's gonna display all of your Razer, uh, app not applications, all of your Razer products and you have quick tabs up here to get to your mouse, your keyboard, your headphones, stuff like that. But over here from the dashboard, we're gonna look at the Razer Death Adder V2. Out of the box, we're at 49% battery life. Now, as it is wireless and rechargeable, I would recommend that you charge it to 100% the first time you use it and then drain it down to about 5% or less before plugging it in and do that the next uh, two or three initial charge cycles down to 5% all the way up to 100 to maximize your battery life. Now. You can adjust your battery. You can remap your buttons right here. However, I would just do this in game. Every game is gonna have key maps, key binds that you can change up your button layout, which I would just do <clears throat> in game. So a little plastic box that looked like a phone charger brick or whatever, that's for the multi-speed multi-device pairing. So basically what that allows you to do is if you have multiple Razer Hyperspeed, which is their ultra fast wireless connection, uh, you know, a little bit of marketing hype there, hyperspeed. They got to have some cool name like that, like Flaming Tomahawk Deluxe or Eagle Knuckle or something like that. But anyway, uh, with the Razer Hyperspeed, which I do have to say is extremely fast. I, I, I it, It's unnoticeable to the human eye or human hand, any kind of delay whatsoever. In fact, they even say that it's faster than a wired connection, which is crazy when you think about that and kind of makes you think it's impossible. But I mean, wireless technology has gotten pretty advanced to where it literally is the same. I wouldn't say it's faster, but it is the same as being plugged in with a USB connection. But this uh, requires an extra firmware update, which I am not going to do right now because I'm not going to have multiple um, hyperspeed mice connected simultaneously unless I'm dual wielding mice or something. I don't know why you would ever need to do that. But if you do have multiple hyperspeed devices, you can use that dongle to connect them both. Over here in the performance section, this is where you're going to set up your DPI. And <clears throat> you can change these on the fly with the DPI buttons on the top and bottom of the mouse. You can change these on the fly with the buttons on the top of the mouse here. And in game, you will get a little overlay that's gonna show you your selected DPI. I'm gonna turn these off though, I always do. I don't switch my DPIs or anything. I just keep it at 1800, which I know sounds a little bit high for first person shooters, but I lower it in each game in the sensitivity. And uh, 1800 for me is absolutely perfect. So lighting, this is for your RGB and whatnot. You can turn it off completely. That's gonna maximize your battery life. But if you wanna, if you want a good balance between, you know, having a little bit of pizzazz or flair, but also good battery life, I would keep it at about 30% or so. And then also I would check both these boxes to have the, the lighting turn off if it's not being utilized. So you have your basic effects here, spectrum cycling, breathing, one static color, audio meter. So whenever there's sound coming out of your speakers, the lights will flicker on your your mouse or keyboard. And then you can also do advanced settings, which you can set up in the Razer Studio application. This thing is pretty amazing. It allows you to coordinate all of your Razer devices to be flowing across your desk in a custom pattern, which is pretty cool, but we won't cover that in this video. Then over here in calibration, this is for your liftoffs. So if you're doing first person shooters and you snap and do liftoffs up off the mouse pad to get it to stop tracking, this is how many millimeters off the mouse pad you need to be for it to stop registering. I would keep this at one millimeter. That's my personal preference because I want the least amount of um, liftoff effort to where it stops registering. You can also do a manual calibration for a specific mouse pad, whether you're using a hard plastic mouse pad, one of those newfangled ones that have glass or plastic fibers in them, or just a traditional cloth soft fabric mouse pad you can customize for your surface, which is pretty awesome. Also, when I'm moving around on the screen, if it looks a little bit stuttery for you guys or anything like that, YouTube is capped at 60 hertz or 60 frames per second, so that's what I screen record at, but on my monitor here, I see 144 hertz, so it looks very, very fluid, very smooth. The mouse just glides across the screen and whatnot. 
over here at power. Um, if you want to save a little bit of extra battery life when you do not touch your mouse for three minutes, one minute, whatever, you can have it go into a standby mode. The only downside to that is uh, when you grab your mouse and click on it, it's going to take a couple seconds to turn itself back on. And then low power mode, this is what percentage of battery life you want to be at before the status indicator light starts flat flashing to let you know to charge. Again, if you have 70 hours of battery life, you can leave this at about 15 because that's still going to give you plenty of heads up time to charge this bad boy. So let's hop into some gameplay here and uh, see how this thing performs. I'm pretty hopeful it does have the same sensor and optical switches and basically the skates and a lot of the other same features as the Viper Ultimate, which is uh, had, has been my favorite gaming mouse for about um, over a month now since I got my hands on it. It's absolutely stunning. I've gotten plenty of awesome gameplay footage with that thing in Call of Duty, Warzone, Fortnite, Apex Legends using that mouse. So I don't think this is going to be any different. The only thing that's different is it's a little bit heavier and obviously it's a different ergonomic shape compared to the Viper Ultimate. So let's play with this thing and then I'm going to cut you guys over to a uh, closeout transition where it's going to be some gameplay footage with me uh, giving my thoughts about the uh, performance for first person shooters. All right, guys, let's get it. Alrighty guys, so not the craziest gameplay and not the craziest mouse either. So the Razer Death Adder V2 Pro. So technically the fourth iteration of the Death Adder mouse with the same ergonomic shell design. Speaking of ergonomics, it didn't really feel that great to me for a full-size ergonomic mouse. I think the Mamba fits my palm a little bit better. And also the side, the right side of the shell is flared out in a way that kind of cocks your ring and pinky finger at an awkward angle. And that was kind of synonymous amongst palm grip as well as when I tried to fingertip as well as claw grip it. It would work. This gameplay here is all with the mouse. And as you can see, I was still able to play with it. It wasn't like unplayable or anything like that. Uh, I will say there are some some pros though. I do like the side buttons. I think that they're very large and easy to hit. They have a nice tactile mechanical feel to them. Same thing with the primary left and right mouse buttons. They felt really really good. And also the uh, distinct steps on the scroll wheel were very satisfying as well as clicking down on the scroll wheel, which is my melee. Now I will say uh, being able to swap DPIs on the fly is really uh, nice. I personally don't use that feature as I just keep it at one set DPI. But if you uh, like that feature, that is very nice nice the battery life was phenomenal i was able to squeeze out about 65 hours out of it uh with the rgb turned down to about 10 percent where it had a subtle glow uh but it wasn't overpowering or anything like that i do like the side grips on it i think they're very very comfortable i do prefer the legacy or old school razor mouse grips that they no longer use but hey it is what it is now, I will say, if you do lose the micro USB cable for it, that is a proprietary cable, and you are kind of SOL unless you have a very, very thin micro USB cable. The left and my right mouse buttons have a very nice tactile responsive click to them. The stock skates are very, very good. They are the identical skates that are on the Razer Viper Ultimate, which is currently my favorite uh, competitive first-person shooter mouse out there. It basically puts a tick in every box. So this does share skates and the same optical sensor as the uh, Viper Ultimate. And you definitely feel that. It was very accurate in tracking, very good with response. It was just primarily the ergonomics weren't great for me. I could not find a comfortable grip for it. I tried palm, claw, and fingertip, and they all felt somewhat unnatural. I have pretty average size hands. I'm about 5'11", 175 pounds. So all in all, a pretty average North American man. And uh, it just did not feel great in my palm. So this mouse retails for $60, which I think is a phenomenal value. The Viper Ultimate is more than double that price. And in my opinion, it is worth more than double that price. But uh, this is definitely, definitely worth $60. I would not feel upset receiving this as a gift or something like that. I wouldn't return it behind someone's back or anything. It's actually a pretty darn good mouse. It's just the ergonomics would take some serious getting used to. The, the left side where your thumb lies is actually sculpted really well, but the right side seemed a little bit too aggressive and flared out. It kind of goes down in a very canted or sloped uh, shape, which doesn't feel very natural. So I think Razer could shave down a few millimeters on the right side and it would probably benefit them as it would fit most North American hands quite well. 
So again, the option that it has Bluetooth is really good if you have a Bluetooth motherboard or laptop, but only use that for productivity, doing schoolwork and web browsing. For gaming, you definitely want to use that 2.4 gigahertz connector. And there is an option for an additional $30 to get the dock that you saw pictured there a second ago. And I think it looks really good. Not only does it make charging really quick, simple, and easy, as it just magnetizes and snaps on there. Um, but it, it also is a way for you to not use another USB port for your PC tower. So all in all, I have to say it's a pretty darn good mouse. I just couldn't really get comfortable with it. That's going to do it, guys. Peace. Now